in this. How many are standing in this? I stand on biblical truth. God did make them male and female. I stand on that. I stand on the biblical definition of marriage. I stand on the biblical definition of life. And I stand on the biblical teaching that Jesus is the only Savior. How many today can say, I stand on this thing? I'm not doubting about the way. I'm not, not questioning it. It's true. It's real. Paul said, I, I preached it to you. And, 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 and you, you stand in it. Uh, he says in verse 2, by which you are also saved. But, 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 that, there is something to this. He says, you're saved if, if you keep in memory this is what I want to get to he says now you got you got to keep this thing on your mind you you got to believe it that to keep in memory literally means to hold in a spiritual sense it is to take possession of and simply put to keep it on your mind to believe it to believe it when the devil comes to tra challenge you and to try to make you doubt God you got to remember what you've heard. Remember what you've read. Remember what you've been taught. And when the enemy tries to take it, you know, death will try to rob you of what you know. Uh, heartache will try to rob you of what you know. Disappointments can try to rob you of what you know. You have to reach deep yourself. Notice what Paul did. Paul put the onus on them. He said, now, I'm going to preach it to you, but you got to keep it in memory. So you got to keep this on your mind. Well, Pastor, it seems like to me the devil is just taking uh, this from me. Well, why are you letting him? I want to know what are you doing? Before you make it my problem, I want to know what are you doing to fight back? Paul put the onus on them. They didn't have a volume of books like you have. They, didn't, they weren't able to go on the internet and find various uh, 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 Bibles and various versions of the scriptures as we have today. They, they didn't have a wealth of biblical uh, information in Corinth. Wasn't nobody preaching what he was preaching but him. And yet he told them, it's still on you. Good God Almighty, you got to keep in memory what I have preached unto you. Just let me tell you something. We've become too weak. Oh, the moment we feel something a little different, there we go doubting God. The moment, praise the Lord, somebody hurt your feelings, there you go doubting God. Listen, listen, hell is real. And you better, you better, we better make sure that we do what we need to do to keep our minds in the right place where we will retain what we've been taught because if I die and my soul is lost it ain't nobody's fault but mine you can't stand before the Lord and say the pastor didn't call me there's a whole lot of situations where you may not get a pastor's phone call it depends on what he's doing the pastor's not God uh, didn't, didn't, the missionaries didn't call me. None of the elders called me. So I just fell by the wayside. No, 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 no. That's not an excuse. You got to keep it in memory. On this sunrise service, point, uh, point at your neighbor and say, you got to hold this thing in your mind. You let the devil take it, you're out. 
everybody's and all this talk about millennials and so many millennials are leaving the church and this and that let me tell you something millennials you leave Jesus you're going where you're going to hell Jesus looked at Peter and said to the disciples will you also go away Peter said where is that for us to go you have the words of eternal life that's true for any age group that's true today that's, that was true yesterday and that'll be true tomorrow you better hold this thing in your mind keep it in memory somebody shout I know why I'm saved good God almighty he said, I, I, feel, I feel my helper coming here yes sir yes sir certain truths you can't let slip certain truths you can't let get away you can't let the enemy praise the Lord cause you to doubt God's precious word people used to that was a time even when the unsaved believed the Bible and even today the Bible still holds a dear place for when you go to court they have you put your hand on the Bible and I said, do you swear to tell the truth? The whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help me God. And, and you said, I do. And with hand on the Bible. Because they believe that, that you, 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 uh, you, you put your hand on what is considered to be ultimate truth. And we who are saved, we know that this is the truth. And it's what the devil want to take from us. And if the devil can take this from us, then he will leave us rocking and reeling, shaking and quaking. But I'm here to tell the devil, get out of here. You can't have this because I know why I am saved. Paul said to them, for I praise the Lord delivered unto you well let me back up to verse 2 and uh, Rocky you, you you making me happy praise the Lord you know we just came out of revival so you know we're a little fired up a little fired up and a little tired he says by which also you are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you unless you have believed in vain upper room members and those who follow this ministry you got to keep in mind what I preached to you I can't preach it to you and keep it in your mind you got to keep it in mind. I'll preach. I'll give you the word. I'm going to do that. If I don't do anything else, I'm going to preach the word of the Lord. But it's your job to retain it. Praise the Lord. Your job when you walk away, you can't just say pastor preach. Go home and talk about what I preached about. Rehearse it to yourself. Take notes. Write it down. Praise the Lord. Get it in your head. Get it in your mind. You got to do that. Uh, you got, that's why you can't let nobody pause in you about your leader. So some of you, you've sat, you've eaten at the wrong dinner tables. You laughed at the wrong jokes. You criticized the wrong man. You don't let anybody criticize your man of God because it's the gospel that he preached. Good God, that if you, re, if you retain it, it's going to keep you. If you keep your mind stayed on Jesus can I get a witness in here today praise the Lord praise the Lord Paul said now nah, I preached it to you I declared it to you and he says and he makes a powerful point he says I don't want you to believe in vain other words as Christians we do not believe in nothing we believe in something faith is belief in something for the qualified to be faith uh, it has to, has to be something concrete that you, uh, that you uh, focus your belief in. If there's nothing concrete, if there's no object to, to concentrate on, to focus on, to point toward, then it is not faith, it is opinion. An opinion won't get you to heaven. But faith, for it to qualify as faith, it's got to be focused on something. Well, I want you to believe and I want you to serve God based on the preaching and the teaching and the Bible that you get. It is, it is important that we know why we're saved. It's important that every believer know how to explain their faith. Explain why they know they're saved sitting on their hands. Be able to tell it without getting happy. Be able to explain it without a hook of a shot. Be able to explain it without speaking in tongues. Be able to sit down and say, I know that I'm saved because, and you talk it out. 
If you can't talk it out, you hadn't been saved yet. Oh, you need to go back and get the doctrine. Praise the Lord. How many today know that you're saved? Paul says, I don't want you to believe in nothing. That's what they teach you many times. And many of the, 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 they tell them in the, the sports world, just believe. We just believe. Believe in what? We believe in believing. I just believe. Just got to keep on believing. You, you, you got to believe. Faith in faith. Is not of God. We are called to have faith in the Lord. Praise the Lord. To jump out of an airplane without a parachute is not faith. That's foolishness. And if you believe that you're going to survive that drop, that uh, we knew that you were crazy before you jumped. The fall killed you, but it was craziness that caused you to jump because there is no, you have no reason. To believe that you will survive if you jump out of an airplane without a parachute. But if you jump out with the parachute, there's some faith in that because you have reasons to believe that you might survive it. What are your reasons? Because you have a parachute on. And when you pull that ripcord, the chute will come out and the chute, praise the Lord, is designed to save you. Well, I have faith in someone and faith in something. I have faith in the old rugged cross. I have faith in what Jesus died, did on the cross. I'm not uh, serving God because I have faith in faith and I'm not serving God because I have faith in myself. I'm serving the Lord because I have faith in Jesus Christ and I have faith in what he did on the cross. Can I get a witness? He says, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I received. Here's my faith. He says here, how that Christ died for our sins. I delivered to you the essence of the gospel. And he lets them know that the gospel was, a his, the, the resurrection was a historical event. It was not something that took place somewhere else. Praise the Lord, like the activities of the Greek gods. It was not something that took place, you know, the Greek gods, they did this in heaven and they did this at another planet and all that. No, Paul said to the Corinthians, no, 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 no. This happened on earth. This, there's, a, there's a time where this happened. There's a place when this happened. There is, this is a real happening. There, there's a person and a time that this happened to. And he said, three things happened. And uh, an upper room, these three things are very important to us. He says, number one, Christ died for your sins. Somebody shout, he died. And number two, uh, Jehovah's Witness, he didn't just appear to die, he died. He didn't just pass out. Uh-uh, he died. And the proof that he actually died is that he was buried. Good God Almighty, Paul says he died and that he was buried. And he didn't just die, but he died for our sins. And he was buried. And on the third day, this is another fact. He rose again. Got up from the dead. I know why I'm saved. I'm saved because I believe that Jesus died. I'm saved because I believe that he was buried. And I'm saved because I believe that he rose again. And this belief has kept me down through the years. Good God Almighty, if I have someone here who can say, I know that I'm saved, somebody shout, I know I'm saved. Paul based his preaching on the established doctrine of the time. Notice Paul kept saying, according to the scriptures. Well, let's deal with the scriptures. I know what you're thinking. You're saying, preacher, I thought you said that uh, Paul wrote this before the gospels. And he did. So when he was saying, according to the scriptures, I can't go back and read what Matthew wrote because at the time Paul preached this, Matthew hadn't written anything. I can't go back and read what Mark wrote because at the time Paul wrote this, Mark hadn't written anything. I can't go back to Luke or John because at the time that Paul wrote this, they had written nothing. So why do I have to go? I gotta go back to the Old Testament and see what they said back then 
about Jesus Christ. If I go to Psalms 22 and 15, you'll find what David wrote. My strength is dried up like a pot shed, and my tongue cleaved to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. This was David writing messianically where Jesus said, my tongue have cleaved to my jaws and I've been brought down and buried into the dust of death. Isaiah 53 and 5 says, now that was Psalms 22 and 15. Isaiah 53 and 5 says that he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our people was upon him and with his stripes we are healed and then I heard Zachariah say in Zechariah 13 and 7 these are scriptures that deal with his death he says awake O sword against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow saith the Lord of hosts they shall smite the shepherd and the sheep shall scatter and I will turn my hand upon the little ones and that's exactly what Jesus said on the night that he died he said it is written they will smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter but the same Old Testament that prophesied his death prophesied his resurrection according to the scriptures Psalms 2 and 7 says I will declare the decree the Lord have said unto me thou art my son this day have I begotten thee and then Psalm 16 and 10 says thou will not leave my soul in hell neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption and then I heard a Hosea say after two days he will revive us and in the third day he will raise us up and he shall and we shall live in his sight these passages were messianic passages talking about God raising Jesus from the dead and I'm here to say on this Easter Sunday morning that Jesus is alive and well they killed him he died on the cross but I'm glad that it didn't stop there that Sunday morning the Lord he got up from the grave wow how many are glad that Jesus is alive how many are glad that he's living in your soul how many are glad that you can feel him but above that that you know that he is the only savior that he is he's real that he is he's powerful that he is he's able to save you to the utmost he's able to lift you say yeah say yeah yeah somebody praise the lord in here if you know praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord and i heard paul say now if christ if christ be preached that he rose from the dead how say some of you that there is no resurrection number one if christ be preached now listen to this look at paul said in the house in order well who was preaching that christ was raised from the dead he was so you know what he was saying? If I'm preaching that Christ was raised from the dead, how is it that some of you who I preached out, tell nobody in the church at Corinth who outranked Paul. He says, now if I, the mighty apostle, if I preach that there's a resurrection, 
where the rest of y'all get this stuff from? Who's in here? Who is in here going against the established doctrine of the house? You can't do that. Is that the way Christianity works? He says, I preach. He's the one. Matthew hadn't written. The rest of them had not. So it brought the doctrine of the resurrection, brought the church back together. It put the church on one accord because he couldn't let that slip. You can't let that. You can't let that divide. You can't let that heresy spread. You, Paul said, I got to oppose this because this will destroy the church. See, this will be our undoing. This will cause people to be lost. See, but Christ did rise. Jesus is alive. Louis Farrakhan, close, but no cigar. Jesus was a good man. Farrakhan would say, Jesus was a righteous man. Ah, that's close in dealing with his humanity. But you didn't even get that right. Because uh, dealing with his humanity, he wasn't just good. He was perfect. Good God Almighty. But dealing with his true identity, you miss by a million miles. No, he's God. He's God the Son. He's the anointed Messiah, and he died. He died. He died. He died. His heart stopped beating. They checked him. The others, when they got to them, they were still alive. And so they broke their legs. But the prophecy had also gone for hundreds of years ahead of time that not a bone in his body would be broken. So what did he do? See, Jesus must have been weaker than the other men because why is it that Jesus died on the cross uh, before his male, the two men who flanked him. Were the, were the thieves stronger? Were the thieves more able to take the pain? Were the, the thieves in better shape? No. He had an ability that the thieves didn't have. He died on the cross, but the crucifixion is not what killed him. What killed him was he screamed out and shouted, it is finished. And he did something that no human being is able to do. He supernaturally gave up the ghost. He says, I'm going to die now. And he died. We can't do that. We don't have that ability. So when they got to him, he was dead. He was dead. Gone. Gone. And they stabbed him in the side, hit the pericardium. Am I right about that? The sac where the heart, that surrounds the heart, the fluid, and out gushed blood and water from his side. And uh, there stood a centurion soldier who was not religious, who was not a believer. But he looked around and saw the events that took place that day. And he said, surely, this man must be the son of God. I know why I am saved. I am saved today because I believe this.
I'm glad that in addition to believing this, I can feel him in my hands. And I can feel him in my feet. At times I can feel him all over me. But that's not why I'm saved. I'm saved because of something that was preached to me that I received. And here I am almost 40 years later and I still believe it. How many believe? I believe this. I believe this. Praise the Lord. I'm not ashamed of this. If the camera catch me, the cam I won't be ashamed. I won't call the church and say, please don't show my face on the telecast because I don't want folk to know that I'm amongst them Christians. I don't want to draw any attention to myself. I want to draw all the attention that I can. And once I've gotten the world's attention, I want to tell them about this. Amen. I can tell the world about this. I can tell the nations I've been blessed. I can tell them that the comforter has come. Praise the Lord. And you know what he did? And, and I can tell them that the victory is won. And, and mother, that he brought joy unto my soul. Glory to God. Those who still believe this. You believe that Christ died. You believe that Christ was buried. And you believe that Christ rose again. If you're not already standing, and the majority of you are, stand on your feet. If you believe this. This is the heart of biblical Christianity. There can be no Christianity. Without this. So, well, well, I, I accept this Savior, but man, that death, burial, and resurrection stuff, I don't know about that. Well, you, you won't be saved until you know. It, it, it won't work without that. Paul says, Thou must confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And he says, And believe, and not just believe, but believe in thine heart. It can't be a perfunctory. Lackadaisical belief. Okay, I'll go along with it. That's what you say. Uh-uh. You gotta believe in thine heart. Look at this. That God raised Jesus from the dead. And he says, if you believe it, thou shalt be saved. I believe. I believe it. I believe it. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day. God first